Let's do a pelvic floor routine together. Now I'm going to be looking at you, but you're going to be looking up at the ceiling throughout this routine. Now let's, whenever you do pelvic floor work, we need to connect to the breath. So let's start with breath. I want you to do a big belly breath into your belly and then exhale and relax your ne head, head, neck and shoulders. So let's do that. Inhale into the belly and exhale, relax your head, neck and shoulders. Okay. Now you can put your hands on your lower belly near your pubic bone. If you like, you're going to breathe. Get the breath going initially into your hands and then imagine it going to the sides of your lower ribs and then imagine it going down towards the floor in your lower back. So we want to try and get the chest and neck to stay as relaxed as possible as we do this. And I want you to give that a go for two breaths. So let's belly breathe, inhale and exhale. Good, and let's do it again. Inhale, and exhale. Good. So the diaphragm, which is right here, it moves up and down in time with the muscles of the pelvic floor. So we need to use our breath when we do pelvic floor work, okay? So this little um, Kegel integrated with the breath is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with something quite general and then go a little bit more specific. So let's inhale again into our bellies. And then you're gonna exhale and imagine gently, like 20% of your maximum effort. So gently at the end, towards the end of the exhale, you're gonna imagine the belly coming a little bit in and a little bit up towards your chest, like scooping up, okay, inside. Only a little bit, nothing is, is, is like maximal effort. That's not how we want the body to be working for us. So we don't train it like that, okay? Now, oftentimes the pelvic floor isn't weak, it's the, co it's the combination of how it's working with the breath, so, or not working. So you wanna gently exhale, belly up, and slightly in with a little bit of effort, and then you want to do a pelvic floor contraction. Imagine you're on the toilet and stopping your pee flow. And then you want to breathe. Let's do two breaths holding this. Some of you may find it hard to hold that long, but give it a try. And then exhale, relax, relax the belly, relax the pelvic floor. So it's really important that we train the contraction part and then we train the relaxation part. So many of us may be having pelvic floor issues, but part of the story is it's, it's working too hard, the muscles are too tight, so we have to consciously practice relaxing it. So how do we do that? We have to contract it so that we can feel the contrast, right? Relaxing it. Let's do it again. Let's do five of these together, okay? So exhale and belly in slightly up towards the chest. Do a little tiny Kegel, the whole pelvic floor contracting. Hold for two breaths. And another. And then exhale, relax it all. Ooh. And if the cues aren't exactly the same with your breath, don't worry about it, just be belly breathing and let's do it again. So inhale. That was one and exhale this is our second rep and just gently belly in and up towards the chest and now a tiny little kegel good now breathe two little breaths you don't obviously do big ones we just want to hold it for two breaths and then exhale relax relax the pelvic floor relax the belly relax the chest and neck. Be mindful that sometimes your eyes, the face will do weird stuff as we do this. Okay, let's do it again. So third rep, let's exhale, belly up and in towards our chest and a little tiny Kegel, contraction of the pelvic floor muscles. Breathe for two breaths. And exhale, whoo, 
Ooh, now feel that contrast of the relaxation. And some of you might be surprised it's not easy to feel that. Now let's do our fourth rep. Let's exhale, belly in and up slightly towards the chest and a contract our Kegel muscles, our pelvic floor. Hold for two breaths. One and two. Ooh, and exhale, ah, relax it all. I might have said four reps, let's do five. So last one. So on an exhale, belly in and up towards our chest, slightly contract your Kegel muscle, inhale, exhale, holding it, inhale, exhale, holding it still. Oh, and then exhale, relax the pelvic floor, relax the belly, relax the chest, relax the neck. Great. Now we want to move this later. This is a great way to start. Later we'll move it into a seated position. Now the pelvic floor is made up of slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch. So we have to chain, train the fast twitch like a sneeze, right? Whoop. They've got to be alert to quickly contract when they need to. So. Let's do that together now. What you're gonna do is that contraction again. So exhale, belly up slightly towards the chest and in, contract the pelvic floor. Now, you can put your hand here if that helps and you're gonna breathe out. And you're gonna quickly do contract, contract what we just have been contracting, belly in and pelvic floor, then you're gonna relax it. Then you're gonna contract and you're gonna contract on the exhale. So as you feel air on your hand, that's when you're gonna do a quick contraction and then relax and then contraction. And then and remember, it doesn't have to be maximal contraction. It's a gentle contraction, okay? So when you sneeze, you don't do over contract. You just want it to be awake and ready. Okay, so let's do it together. We're gonna to belly in and our Kegel and now let's do it quickly. So contract, relax. Awesome, that was 10. We'll relax for a moment and we'll do it again. So just to review, it was belly in and up, a little Kegel, gently, and then every time you exhale, you're contracting those, that area, and then as you, when you stop doing, when you don't have the, when you inhale, you relax it, so, but it's quick. So let's do it again, belly in slightly, do a Kegel, and let's exhale. <sighs> Ooh, great, excellent. So now let's tune into that area and make sure I want you to tune into your pelvic floor, tune into your belly, tune into your chest and neck and relax everything. You might be surprised, your neck might be contracting. You might be surprised. So we always have to remember to relax the area extra because some of us may be used to being really tense there. Okay, now we're gonna do the pelvic clock. This is a little more specific. Okay, and again, the more we can connect to these muscles, there's eight or nine of them in the pelvic floor making up a sling from your pubic bone to your coccyx, then you, the better, the more we can connect to this area, the better. So, because it's a bunch of different muscles, we can, we can at least try and do this, okay? Don't get frustrated if you can't, just keep trying. So it's called the pelvic clock. So what I want you to do is just follow my voice, okay? So tune in, you don't have to worry so much about your breath, but tune into your pelvic floor and imagine contracting the right side of your pelvic floor, okay? Contract the, now relax the right side and make sure you don't feel your glutes or your leg contracting. So try it again. You can just contract that right side of the pelvic floor. Then you're gonna relax it. Now you're gonna contract the left side of your pelvic floor, good and then relax it. Let's do that again. Relax your whole body. And then imagine just a slight contraction of the left side of the pelvic floor. Good. Can we do this for real? Probably a little bit, but it's, it's more the intention of it, okay? So you might've found one side easier than the other. That's very normal. 
um, for that to be the case in our body. Now we're gonna tune into the anus. So the pelvic floor, those muscles can contract the sphincter around the anus, the muscles. So let's contract just the posterior part of our, the back part of our pelvic floor, which is our anus. And then relax it, good. Now we're gonna contract the middle around the vagina. Good, and then we're gonna relax it. And now we're gonna contract our, the front area around our pee hole, and then relax it. And again, now tune in, relax the belly, relax the pelvic floor, the chest, the neck. You might be again surprised. Even when we're trying to do a little motion, the rest of the body might try, be trying to help. So that's the pelvic clock. Let's do it two more times together. So we'll start at the right side, do a little contraction, and then relax. Left side, contract the pelvic floor, relax. Now posterior around the anus, the back, contract gently, relax. Now imagine contracting around the vagina and relax. And now you're gonna imagine contracting around the front, around the pee hole, and relax. Ah, oh, wonderful. If you don't feel like you're doing it right, don't worry about it. Just, the, again, it's the intent and the effort um, and some practice, you'll, it'll, it'll start to feel more connected, which is the goal. So let's do that one more time. Tune into that right pelvic floor and contract slightly, gently, and then relax it. And then we're gonna contract the left side and relax it. We're gonna contract the posterior around the anus, gently relax. And then we're gonna contract around the vagina hole, gently relax. And then we're gonna contract around the pee hole at the front and relax. Wonderful. You've just done a really good thing for your pelvic health and your pelvic floor. And then you can take all of these exercises into a seated position. You can do it with your legs straight, with your legs bent. I now added in on this, especially the fast twitch uh, type of firing, I added in on my walk. I just do it once or twice. So you wanna add this in into your daily routine as much as you can but you also just wanna practice in this lying position first to get the hang of it, and then you can bring it into your different positions that you're in throughout the day. Wonderful, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, would love to hear how it's going in the comments below, and I look forward to interacting with you on this channel. Thank you, bye.